How can this sachem at the fort dare to exact a tax from us? He must be a very shabby fellow. He has come to live in our land when we have not invited him, and now he attempts to deprive us of our corn for nothing. The soldiers at Fort Amsterdam are no protection to us. We entreat that immediate hostile measures may be directed against the savages. They have not yet delivered up the assassins of Smits and Van Vorst, and thus these murders remain unavenged. The national character of the Dutch must suffer. God has now delivered our enemies into our hands. Let us attack them. The noise of muskets mingled with the shrieks of the terrified Indians. Neither age nor sex were spared. Warrior and squaw, sachem and child, mother and baby were alike massacred. Daybreak scarcely ended the furious slaughter. Mangled victims seeking safety in the thickets were driven into the river. Parents rushed to save their children, whom the soldiers had thrown into the stream, were driven back into the waters and drown before the eyes of their unrelenting murderers. I sat up that night by the kitchen fire at the director's. About midnight, hearing loud shrieks, I ran up to the ramparts of the fort looking towards Pavonia. I saw nothing but shooting and heard nothing but the shrieks of Indians murdered in their sleep. Some came to our people in the country with their hands, some with their legs cut off, and some holding their entrails in their arms. And others had such horrible cuts and gashes that worse than they were could never happen. And these poor simple creatures, as also many of our people, did not know any better than that they had been attacked by a party of other Indians or Mohawk. After this exploit, the soldiers were rewarded for their services, and the director Kieft thanked them by taking them by the hand and congratulating them. On arriving there, the Indians were wide awake and on their guard, so that ours determined to charge and surround the houses, sword in hand. They demeaned themselves as soldiers and deployed in small bands, so that we got in short time one dead and twelve wounded. They were also hard pressed that it was impossible for one to escape. In a brief space of time, there were counted 180 dead outside the houses. Presently, none burst forth, keeping within the houses, discharging arrows through the holes. The general perceived that nothing else was to be done and resolved that Sergeant Major Underhill to set the huts on fire, whereupon the Indians tried every means to escape, not succeeding in which they returned back into the flames, preferring to perish by fire than die by our hands. What was most wonderful is that among the vast collection of men, women, and children, not one was heard to cry or scream. According to the report of the Indians themselves, the number then destroyed exceeded 500, some say a full 700. <laughs>